Everybody and welcome to another Around the World in 88 Tales and I'm delighted to be with Sui Yen Wong from Singapore. Hi Sui Yen. Hello, hello, hi David. How are you? It's a great pleasure to be here. It's wonderful to be here with you. I'd, I'd love it if you would introduce yourself but first let me just say about the project. I'm here with the Royal Albert Memorial Museum, sharing stories with 44 story sharers from all around the world as part of this project. So, Sui Yen, um, tell us about yourself, if you don't mind. Um, I'm from Singapore, and I'm a storyteller and also an educator. Um, I, um, just like you with the museum in, in Exeter, um, I've been, um, in the past few years, with the National Gallery, telling stories from the art pieces, yeah, that we have at the museum. So it's kind of cool. I, I like the idea of having an object and we build a story around this object. Yeah. So the other part that I often do is I go to the classroom and I work with all, all kinds of students. So I have from ages to three, all the way to 93, <laughs> I work with uh, teenagers as well as we senior citizens and it's fun to bring stories to them and draw stories from them. Can I ask you, is that always in, in the English language? Um, very often in English language, but more and more um, I do with Chinese, Mandarin and also Chinese dialect and more and more I'm bringing people along to do in other languages that is to do with our mother tongue because Singapore is a multicultural society. So yeah. yeah. Very, much so. very much so. So let's have a look at Singapore on the map for people who are not so sure. Yes, the we right are a little red dot. <laughs> the equator, so it must be pretty hot. Ah uh, yes, yes, yes. Very warm here all year round. <laughs> I'm I'm here in Exeter. Yeah. I'm going to show you an artifact that comes from Africa, comes from Ah, Tanzania. okay. All right. So it's an artifact from the World Cultures Collection, which is very famous in the, in the Ram Museum. And let me show you um, this image. Okay, so here we are. This is a spear. Um, oh. It's a spear. And I've actually got here with me a spear head. From oh, Africa. wow. Where did you say it was from? Tanzania, so in East Africa. Ah, yes. Put that into the picture. Uh, just making sure it's there in the picture. Yes, there we are. Yeah. It looks sharp. <laughs> yeah. But the story I'm going to tell doesn't come from Africa, but it does have a spear in it. It doesn't have one spear. It has nine spears. So I'm going to tell my story. It's called The Tiger and the Hunter, and it's a Nivka story. And the Nivka people come from the very, very east of Russia, um, from not far from the border with China, not far from Japan, sort of here. OK, it's a very small minority people, not many Nivka people left. But this is a traditional Nivka story. And we have to imagine it's very, very cold and they need warmth in the winter. So I'll tell a story and afterwards, Sui Yen, would you like to respond with another story? Yes, of course, I would love to. Okay, so here we go. Long, long, long ago, 
there was a hunter. And this hunter in the winter saw that the snow was falling and the cold was coming and knew that there was need for furs, warm furs to wear. And he would go hunting for otters and sable. So he went to his son and asked his son to come with him. And then he went to his sister's son, who was younger. And he brought the two boys with him far away. They went. And there in the middle of the white snow wasteland, they built a tent out of spruce branches. They laid traps all around the tent to catch otters or sable. But they caught nothing. Day after day after day passed, they caught nothing. The whole of a moon cycle passed, and still they had trapped nothing. One night, the hunter woke up and saw stretched out across the entrance to the tent a great tiger, and the tiger was watching him. Oh, tiger, please do not eat me. Do not eat my son. We will leave, and I will leave my sister's son for you. The tiger looked at him and moved slowly away. The hunter woke his own son, and quickly they crept out of the tent and silently ran for their lives. In the morning, the boy woke up. He saw the tiger stretched out across the entrance to the tent, watching him, and his eyes filled with tears, not because he was afraid, but because his uncle and his cousin had left him behind. He said to the tiger, Oh tiger, it is cold. I must get some firewood so I can warm myself and cook some food. The tiger moved slowly away, and the boy went outside and collected wood, brought it back to the tent and made a fire to cook. The tiger remained outside the tent. All day long the boy waited, and at night he went to sleep, and in his sleep his dream and the tiger's dream were one. In the dream the boy saw an open clearing full of tigers and above the clearing was a steep mountain at the top of the mountain there was a cave and out of the cave came a great lion and the powerful lion roared and all of the tigers fell down dead then the great lion roared again and the tigers came back to life how these tigers are controlled by that lion. In his dream, the boy heard the tiger asking him, you are brave, you will save us. The boy woke up in the morning and said to the tiger, if I am going to help you, I will need spears, but I only have one spear with an iron tip. Let me make more. And the tiger moved aside and he went out and with his axe he cut down a dry larch tree. And from that wood he made nine sharp wooden spears. No, eight sharp wooden spears. The ninth spear was the one with the iron tip. Now I am ready. He held the nine spears in one hand and climbed onto the tiger's back. And the tiger ran swiftly and silently through the soft snow. The boy held on to the scruff of the lion's neck, the tiger's neck. The tiger carried him swiftly but did not let him slip or fall, and finally came to the clearing where all of the tigers gathered around, and they bowed down low to the brave young hunter. The boy looked up and saw the steep mountain, and there was the cave, and out of the cave came the huge lion, and the lion let out a tremendous roar. 
all of the tigers dropped dead to the ground. The boy stood looking at the lion in the silence, and then the lion roared again. And the tigers rose alive. Strange. The boy took his iron-tipped spear and thrust it into the ground. Then he took his first wooden spear and threw it into the side of the mountain. He jumped up and caught hold of the wooden spear, pulled himself up and balanced on top of it. He pushed another spear into the side of the mountain, climbed up onto that one, then threw the next spear higher up. He made a ladder of spears, climbing up the steep mountain. And with one spear left, he reached the top. The lion was sleeping in the cave. He went in and pricked the lion with a wooden spear. The lion roared and ran after him out of the cave, but the boy, not turning his back, jumped backwards off the top of the mountain and landed on the topmost spear. The lion came after him, but he threw the spear into the lion's side. He jumped down to the next spear, took the spear above out of the mountain. The lion came after him, but he hurled the spear into the lion's side. Each time the lion was wounded more, each time the lion was more dangerous. Down and down and down the mountain he came, and reaching the bottom, the lion, injured badly, dying but furious, leapt at the boy to devour him. But he took his iron-tipped spear from the ground and thrust it into the lion's throat, and the lion fell dead to the ground. The tigers bowed down low. The boy climbed onto the back of the tiger that had brought him there, and the tiger carried him swiftly and silently through the snow, and back to the spruce branch tent. He went around all the traps outside the tent, set them. He made marks with his gloved hands, like the tracks of sable, and then he went inside the tent and slept. And you know that in the morning when he woke up, every trap had a sable in it. And he took those sable skins, those beautiful, thick, dark golden furs, those warm furs made for winter, and he brought them home to his community, where he was greeted, welcomed, and lived with respect and admiration for his great bravery. So there's my spear-inspired story. If anybody would like to comment or ask a question in the chat, feel free. But what, I love that story from the Nivka people. Oh, wow. It's like a story of chivalry. <laughs> yeah. Courage. Right? What a brave boy. Yeah. It, it, it actually reminded me of Mowgli, <laughs> the jungle <Like> boy. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes, yes. But um, I, I think it was very exciting when you, you know, you, you, with your words painted the, the spears becoming a ladder and how he pulled out one by one I know, <laughs> and then threw them out. That's the image that drew me to this story. When I, when I read the story, I read it in a book called, um, called Northern Light Stories from the North. And oh, I just thought this is a story I, I would love Ooh. to love to share. Yeah. Cami says, the boy turned a dire situation into an opportunity to both help the tigers, himself and his people. Mm. Yeah. We need to I, I, yeah. Creatively. <laughs> yes, this is I, a tiger friendly story. I mean, there are so many stories where it paints a tiger in a negative way, but I, I thought this is this is a nice one. Yeah, but, but not very lion friendly. <laughs> 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 I wonder what the lion represents, some kind of terrible power or authority. I think it anyway, Sui Yen, while I was telling that story, um, were you inspired by this spearhead to tell perhaps another story? Yeah, 
Yes, actually, um, just when you were telling me, another story came up to mind. Um, so I kind of have three or four stories already. <laughs> um, yeah, you just reminded me of these ones. Um, it's a storyteller's but... dilemma. Which story to choose? <laughs> right now, I think I have one that um, I really like um, because it's from the Chinese tradition. And um, it's a, a well-known story about a spear and a shield. Yeah. And um, if you were to understand the Chinese word for spear is Mao. Spear is Mao and shield is Tun. And there is a, a story about that. Yeah. So I'm going to tell you about a story that happened long, long ago, just like yours. And it's during the period of the Warring States. That's like um, 200, 400, 400 to 200 BC, when China was not a unified country, but had many states. And there was often the tussle of power, and occasionally there would be peace. Now, in the state of Chu at that time, was a man who sold weapons in the market. Now, in the marketplace, there would be people who sold vegetables, um, so fruits, sold meat, and household wares. These are things that people normally they want to buy. And if they were poor, that's what they would buy. So hardly anyone visited the man who sold weapons. Now, he had to be very creative to sell weapons. And what better than to have a special sale? He decided to sell his Mao. Mao for sale, Mao for sale. Two for the price of one. Or even buy two, get one free. He shouted loudly, Mao for sale. My Mao is strong. My Mao with its blade of steel can pierce through a wall of stone. And he demonstrated how it pierced the wall in front of him. Come along, come along, buy my Mao. With this Mao, you can't go wrong. Now he chanted, Lai, 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 which is come, come, come. And my, 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 buy, buy, buy. And the people heard that. Oh, they drew near to him and they marveled at his mouth. And then he saw the young men, curious young men looking at his mouth. He said, young man, young man, to buy a weapon so great and cheap. Come, come, get it now. Then the women, they looked at them and they were thinking, why not a cheap deal? We might need to hunt one day and perhaps get some meat to put in our pot. So why not? Why not get Mao? And so the men and the women, they all began to buy. Oh my, oh my, oh my, I buy, I'll buy, I'll buy. Now, the weapon seller, he was getting very excited. Hey, he could get rid of his Mao. Why not his Tun? So then he decided, ah, Tun for sale, Tun for sale. Um, buy two and get one free. My Tun is hard and strong, made of iron, can penetrate, uh, any, nothing can penetrate, yet so lightweight. And then a great armor for you, young men, a great protection, ladies, for your family. And so, oh, the young men and the young women, uh, the young men and the women were all interested and as they were taking out their money and going, oh my, oh my, oh my, I'll buy, I'll buy, I'll buy. One of the ladies who brought her son along and he said, um, uncle, 
You said your mouth is strong, and your tuan is strong. What if I were to strike your mouth against your tuan? All of a sudden, there was silence. The weapon seller he couldn't say anything. And then, the young men around, the women, they all thought for a while. Yeah, that's Mao Dun. In Chinese, it means a contradiction, but literally it means spear, shield. And so, of course, the people walked away, and nobody bought from the weapon seller. And today we have this phrase Mao Dun, um, which is often used. Um, I think it describes a lot about myself as a parent. I'm often a contradiction. <laughs> <laughs> but there you have it, <laughs> a spear story. <laughs> Fantastic, and it's not only a spear story. It's got such. It's it's a it's a story with a lot of depth because it's telling us something deeply about Chinese language and Chinese culture. I think you have a lot of these kind of combinations of words and phrases in Chinese which carry a story behind them and have a that, that, that yes tell us a lot yeah and sometimes one Chinese character carries a story behind it yeah so that's that's why I like, really like this and I must say I was inspired um, when I was uh, doing my research um, and this story was inspired by Chinese buddy which I found and they really uh, made it re alive for non-Chinese speakers, these two characters. And I thought, oh, what a wonderful way. And I decided to build upon it. Yeah. So the best translation of Mao Dong is contradiction. Yes. And actually, it comes with it's four words. Zhi xiang Mao Dong. You are self-contradiction. So actually, it's it's what is it's an idiom. Zhi xiang Mao Dong. But we also use this the two characters in sentences. So it's used to criticize yourself or other people, you know. You're, you're, yeah, you're, yeah. You're, 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 yeah, you are a contradiction right now, you know. Yourself. Fantastic. Yeah. Sui Yen, thank you so much for telling us a wonderful story and educating us. Oh, about, thank about, you. About, it's so wonderful great. to tell the story around the spear. <laughs> All inspired by a spear. <laughs> Absolutely. Beautiful spearhead. Yes, so yes. This wonderful Around the World in 88 Tales project continues next week. They'll be, I'll be meeting two storytellers, hopefully Sanja Raskovic from um, Croatia and Baba C from Washington DC in the United States. So looking forward to, to you joining us again next week and carry on commenting in the Facebook chat. I'll just see if there's any last minute comments. Um, love the connection between language and story. You must have so many stories in your head, Sui Yen. And I'd love to hear another spear shield story. Where can I find one? Where can she find <laughs> another spear shield story? <laughs> well, this one is, well, I I have other spear story, but didn't go with the shield. <laughs> I, think, I think that is the one. That is the one. This is the one. <laughs> okay. Thank you again, Yen, and goodbye, everybody. Good goodbye. 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 Thank you. I the trees. I can't buy the deepest seas. But it don't matter, cause they're there for free